hey all hope you all are doing well in today's video we are going to discuss the de novo synthesis of fatty acids so most of the fatty acids required by the human body are supplied in the diet and this fatty acids are synthesized in the body whenever there is a diet excess and calorie excess is there so before going in the detail of the de novo synthesis of fatty acid please subscribe my youtube channel that is biochemistry basics by dr amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it so de novo synthesis of fatty acid as we all know that de novo means synthesis of new things and the first substrate for the de novo synthesis of fatty acid is the acetyl coa again this fatty acids are oxidized into the acetyl coa so we can say that substrate as well as the end product of the fatty acids are acetyl coa but this de novo synthesis of fatty acid is not a reversal of that beta oxidation of fatty acid and the major organs which carried out de novo synthesis of fatty acids are it is liver and to lesser extent it also occur in the adipose tissue kidney and brain now we will see the few major differences between the de novo synthesis of fatty acids and beta oxidation of fatty acids the first major difference is related to the subcellular site fatty acid synthesis synthesis is occurring in the cytosol while the beta oxidation is occurring in the mitochondria second difference is related to the coenzyme requirements so the reducing equivalents for the fatty acid synthesis are supplied in the form of nadph while in the beta oxidation they are supplied in the form of fad and nad and fatty acid chain gets elongated by the carbon units addition in the form of malonyl coa while in the beta oxidation the chain is shortened by the sequential removal of carbon in the form of acetyl coa so over here two carbon units are added in the form of malonyl coa while in the beta oxidation two carbon units are sequentially removed in the form of acetyl coa another fourth major difference is related to the enzyme system in the fatty acid synthesis enzymes are existing in the form of multi enzyme complex which is also called as a fatty acid synthase complex while in the beta oxidation enzymes are not associated with each other another difference is related to the transport system the fatty acid synthesis the transport is transport system is in the form of citrate which transport acetyl coa from mitochondria to the cytosol while in the beta oxidation it exists in the form of carnitine and in the fatty acid synthesis CO2 take, takes participation in the formation of malonyl coa while in the beta oxidation there is no such participation of CO2 so these are the few major differences between the fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation from which we can say that fatty acid synthesis is not a reversal of beta oxidation of fatty acids now let's see the three main phases involved in the de novo synthesis of fatty acids So the first first phase which is involved in the fatty acid synthesis is the transport of acetyl coa which is synthesized in the mitochondria from the pyruvate to the cytosol second phase is the carboxylation of acetyl coa for the synthesis of malonyl coa and it is the rate limiting step and the third step or third phase involved in the fatty acid synthesis is done by the reactions carried out by the fatty acid synthase complex so these are the three main phases involved in the fatty acid synthesis we will see one by one the first one is the transport of acetyl coa from mitochondria to the cytosol so the acetyl coa which is synthesized from the pyruvate is in the mitochondria and this inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to that of acetyl coa so first this acetyl coa get condense to the oxaloacetate by the citrate synthase enzyme and it leads to the synthesis of citrate and this citrate with the help of citrate translocase enzyme it crosses the inner mitochondrial membrane and it it is transported to the cytosol in the cytosol citrate is 
converted to the oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA by the citrate lyase enzyme and the acetyl-CoA which is synthesized at the end of this step is utilized for the no synthesis of fatty acid. Now oxaloacetate which is synthesized at the end of this reaction must transport it back to the mitochondria but this inner mitochondrial membrane again it is impermeable to that of oxaloacetate. So this oxaloacetate reduced in the presence of malate dehydrogenase enzyme to the malate and this malate undergoes oxidative decarboxylation and it gets converted to the pyruvate by the malic enzyme. As there is oxidative decarboxylation, so there is a removal of carbon dioxide as well as there is a synthesis of one molecule of NADPH. So the CO2 and NADPH will be utilized for the de novo synthesis of fatty acid. And the pyruvate which is synthesized at the end of this reaction is, trans is uh, transported back to the mitochondria by crossing the inner mitochondrial membrane by the pyruvate translocase enzyme. And the pyruvate which is transported back to the mitochondria, it undergoes carboxylation reaction by the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme and it is converted back to the oxaloacetate. So this is the picture showing the transport of acetyl-CoA from mitochondria to the cytosol with the help of citrate. The second phase which is involved in the de novo synthesis of fatty acid is the carboxylation of acetyl-CoA. This carboxylation reaction is carried out by the acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme which require biotin as a coenzyme and as there is a carboxylation reaction so it requires energy which is supplied in the form of ATP. So at the end of the carboxylation reaction acetyl-CoA is converted to the malonyl-CoA and it is the rate limiting step for the de novo synthesis of fatty acid. So these are the two phases of de novo synthesis of fatty acid. We have already seen transport of acetyl-CoA from mitochondria to the cytosol and the second phase is the carboxylation of acetyl-CoA for the synthesis of malonyl-CoA. Now the third phase is the reaction carried out by the fatty acid synthase complex. The fatty acid synthase complex it is somewhat similar to the pyruvate dehydrogenase multi-enzyme complex. It is consist of six different enzymes and one acyl carrier protein and these six different enzymes are first one is the malonyl acetyl transacylase second one is the ketoacyl synthase third one is the ketoacyl reductase fourth one is the hydratase and the fifth one is the enoyl reductase and the sixth one is the thioesterase Try to remember all this enzyme in this sequence only. So you can write down the steps of the de novo synthesis of fatty acid in the exam very easily. First one is the malonyl acetyl transacylase. Second one, is, second one is the ketoacyl synthase. Third one is the ketoacyl reductase. Fourth one is the hydratase. Fifth one is the enol reductase. And the sixth one is the thioesterase. This is the picture showing the structure of this fatty acid synthase multi-enzyme complex. This uh, fatty acid synthase enzyme complex, it exists in a dimeric form which consists of two identical monomer subunit. Though all this monomer contains all the six enzymes along with the acyl carrier protein, they are active only in the form of dimer. So this fatty acid synthase complex will work only if there is a dimeric form is present. Now, so these are the six different enzymes along with the acyl carrier protein is present. And thus, in the acyl carrier protein segment, the pentothenic acid is attached in the form of 4 phosphopentothen, which provides sulfhydryl group for the attachment of the growing, growing chain of fatty acid. And the another sulfhydryl group, which is provided by the Ketoacyl synthase over here again this part is also taking part in the fatty acid synthesis. So the two sulfhydryl group they are supplied by the ketoacyl synthase as well as by the acyl carrier protein. In the acyl -CoA carrier protein malonyl CoA will get attached while in the ketoacyl synthase acetyl CoA will get attached. So this is the 
picture showing the structure of fatty acid synthase complex which is a multi enzyme complex consist of six different enzymes along with the acyl carrier protein and they are functional only in the dimeric form now let's see the steps involved in the we know a synthesis of fatty acid which carried out by the fatty acid multi enzyme complex so this is the first monomer and this is the second monomer so now let's see the steps so the first step is the first step is the attachment of acetyl group to the sulfhydryl group attached to the keto acyl synthase and melonyl to the sulfhydryl group attached to the acyl carrier protein in the presence of melonyl acetyl transacylase and it gets lead it gets leads to synthesis of acetyl melonyl enzyme which is also called as acetyl melonyl acyl carrier protein so this is the first step which is carried out by the melonyl acetyl transacylase which is also called as a met met the second step is the condensation reaction of acetyl and melonyl group the acetyl group which is present on the sulfhydryl group of the keto acyl synthase is transferred to the sulfhydryl group attached to the acyl carrier protein by removal of one carbon dioxide so there is a removal of carbon dioxide in the condensation reaction and transfer of acetyl group from the sulfhydryl group attached to the keto acyl synthase enzyme to the sulfhydryl group attached to the acyl carrier protein which leads to the synthesis of three keto acyl enzyme which is also called as a three keto acyl acyl carrier protein now this three keto acyl enzyme undergoes reduction reaction and it utilizes the nadph so this nadph is coming from the hmp shunt pathway so after the reduction this three keto acyl enzyme is converted to the three hydroxy acyl enzyme as there is attachment of hydroxyl group at the third position so the name of the product is the 3 hydroxy acyl enzyme and the enzyme which carried out this reduction reaction is reduction reaction is the 3 keto acyl reductase which is also called as a kr now the fourth step is the hydratase reaction so the there is a dehydration reaction involved at the end of the dehydration there is a synthesis of 2 3 unsaturated acyl enzyme which is also called as a 2 3 unsaturated acyl acyl carrier protein as there is a presence of double bond between the second and third carbon that's why it is called as a 2 3 unsaturated acyl enzyme now this 2 3 unsaturated acyl enzyme again it undergoes reduction reaction by the enoyl reductase and again there is a requirement of nadph for the in the form of electron donor and this nadph is coming from the hmp shunt pathway so at the end of this fifth step there is a synthesis of four carbon containing acyl enzyme or it is also called as a acyl butyryl acyl carrier protein fine so this is at the end of the fifth reaction now there is a transfer of acyl group which is present on the second monomer which is attached to the acyl carrier protein to the first monomer so this acyl group which is containing four carbon is transferred to the first monomer there is a transfer of acyl group to the first monomer and all this second to fifth step it will be repeated for the seven times for the synthesis of palmitic acid which contains 16 carbon all the steps from second to the fifth it will be repeated seven times at each cycle there will be the addition of two carbon so for the synthesis of palmitic acid which contains 16 carbon we have to repeat all this step from the second to the fifth step for the seven times for the synthesis of palmitic acid which contains 16 carbon and the after synthesis of this palmitic acid there will be the reaction by the thioesterase enzyme which will remove this palmitic acid from this fatty acid synthase complex and it will be released so this is how de novo synthesis of fatty acid is occurring 
then one should remember that for the synthesis of long chain fatty acid with the even number of carbon the acetyl coa will be acting as a prime primer while for the synthesis of long chain fatty acid which contain odd number of carbon atom propionyl coa will be acting as a primer so summary of dino synthesis of fatty acid we, we can write down the summary in the form of there is a requirement of 8 acetyl coa it utilizes the seven molecule of atp in the carboxylation reaction and there is a utilization of 14 nadph for the synthesis of palmitic acid which contains 16 carbon so palmitic acid eight co enzyme a seven adp molecule and six h2o so this is the summary of dino synthesis of fatty acid we require eight molecules of acetyl coa 7 ATP and 14 molecules of NADPH for the synthesis of palmitic acid. Now regulation of fatty acid synthesis. So we have already seen that the steps step which is catalyzed by the acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme, which is the rate limiting step involved in the biosynthesis of fatty acid, and it is the important site for the regulation. This acetyl CoA carboxylase is regulated by following mechanism. First one is the allosteric regulation, and second one is the feedback inhibition. First one, allosteric activation is done by the citrate. Citrate stimulates the activity of acetyl CoA carboxylase, and the feedback inhibition is done by the palmitoyl CoA. So, if there is enough availability of the palmitic acid, then this palmitic acid will inhibit the acetyl CoA carboxylase. So, this is the allosteric activation, and this is the feedback inhibition. Along with that, this acetyl CoA carboxylase is also regulated by the covalent modification. So, whenever there is a availability of glucagon and epinephrine, so this glucagon and epinephrine will do the phosphorylation of this acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme and in the phos in the phosphorylation form this acetyl coa carboxylase is deactivated so there is no any de novo synthesis of fatty acid will occur so this is how this de novo synthesis of fatty acid is regulated and the elongation and unsaturation of fatty acid will be done in the mitochondria as well as in the endoplasmic reticulum now let's see the various multiple choice question asked from this particular topic in various entrance examination the first question is which was asked in aims 2013 which of the following is not a part of the fatty acid synthase complex and the options are a ketoacyl reductase b enoyl reductase c acetyl coa carboxylase and d ketoacyl synthase so acetyl coa carboxylase is the answer it is not a part of fatty acid synthase complex in the fatty acid synthase complex there is a presence of six different enzymes along with one acyl carrier protein second question which was asked in all india 2012 mitochondria is involved in except the options are a fatty acid synthesis b dna synthesis C fatty acid oxidation and D protein synthesis. So as we have already seen, the de novo synthesis of fatty acid is occurring in the cytosol. So mitochondria is involved in other uh, pathways, but it is not involved in the fatty acid synthesis. Now another question which was asked in a NEET 2016: Acetyl CoA carboxylase is activated by options are A malonyl CoA, B citrate. C palmitoyl CoA and D acetoacetate. So we have seen that in the regulation part of the de novo synthesis of fatty acid, that acetyl CoA carboxylase it gets activated by allosteric activation, which is done by the citrate. So the answer is B citrate. Another question which was asked in AIMS May 2003: Acetyl CoA act as a substrate for the All the enzymes except, and the options are HMG CoA reductase, B malic enzyme, C malonyl CoA synthetase, D fatty acid synthase. So acetyl CoA is the substrate for the fatty acid synthesis, malonyl CoA synthetase, malic enzyme, and the malic enzyme substrate is the malate, which converts malate to the pyruvate by the oxidative decarboxylation. So the answer is B malic enzyme, and the malic enzyme acetyl CoA is not a substrate. 
Another question which was asked in the AIMS November 91 carbon atoms added in the fatty acid synthesis and the options are A 2 in the first cycle and the 4 in second cycle B 4 in the first cycle and second in the second cycle C second in the first cycle and second in the second cycle and the D 4 in first cycle and 4 in second cycle the carbon atom added in the fatty acid synthesis are 4 in the first cycle from the acetyl coa and two from the malonyl coa and in the second cycle there is a two carbon from the malonyl coa so the correct answer is b four in first cycle and second in second cycle and the last question is from pgi december 2006 fatty acid synthesis co2 loss occur in which step a hydration b dehydration the condensation reaction and the reduction reaction so we have seen the pathway hydration there was a there was no removal of carbon dioxide reduction there was a utilization of NADPH in the condensation reaction which is the second step there is a removal of CO2 so that is the answer C condensation reaction these are the my references Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. 